On this episode of Greco Fabulous, I hit up a local auction house aiming for something sweet, but finding something sweeter. Hey guys, Greco Fabulous here, looking all sharp as per usual. I'm kind of a scrub actually. Anyways, uh, it is a Monday. I am, I already worked. And I'm gonna be checking out this auction house. Saw an ad. They have something that we haven't bought before. It's uh, not really in our wheelhouse, but from the limited research that I've done, uh, it might be, if we can get it for a good enough deal, it might be something worth our while. So we'll see how that works out. I'm actually an hour early from the auction. Uh, some, def some decent traffic here. So I don't really know what the, uh, the toy market is at this place. I'm hoping, like that other auction I went to many moons ago, that nobody cares. And then I just come up with everything like dirt cheap. Um, and then all these other fools are fighting over, you know, vintage furniture and antique plungers and all that other dumb stuff that people collect. Not cool things like toys. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go in there, try to get some video. I'm not sure how they feel about that. And uh, try to do some research and see what my bottom line is. Then I'll be getting my own paddle and hopefully lifting it. Not too many times, because that means I'm bidding a lot of money. Fun fact. Water, product placement. Okay, auction hasn't started yet, but my heart is already pounding. Um, so what I was expecting in there is there. Seemed to have gotten some looks. Uh, but there was a whole tub of something that I was not expecting. And that's what's giving me these heart palpitations. Because, man, if I could score this for a good price, it's going to be really good. But there's a lot of them. Uh, so it, the per item price might be good. But it might take some some money to get this out the door. Uh, I don't know what my competition's like, honestly. I've never been here before. It's an older crowd, so I'm hoping that that what I'm excited about doesn't excite them as much. Um, but you really can't, you can't read a book by its cover because one of those days, I'm going to be the old guy buying toys. So if you saw the footage, you probably have a good idea of what I'm talking about. Um, so wish me luck, got my number, and uh, let's see how this goes. But I have to get this. Well, I don't have to get it. I have to get it for the right price. But I really... It can't possibly go crazy, can it? God, I really hope it doesn't. All right, I'm going to try to get some footage in there when the auction's actually going on. Uh, I'm not going to hold the camera up. So you might get... Hopefully you'll get some audio at least. But see how it goes. What is R40? And this is what you're buying here is a generous box lot. It says it's 50 plus pieces of um, Go Bots, all from Child World. You're buying that tote full right there. I'd like to get $1,000 on that tote. How about $500 where you get it going? Any interest in at $500, $250, where are all the Go Bots? I got $100 to $125. $100 to $125, $125, $150, $175. And $175 bid $200, bid $200, quarter. And $200, quarter, bid $200, bid $200, bid $275. And $275, bid $300, bid $300, quarter. $300, bid $300, bid $375. And $375, bid $400, bid $400, quarter. $400, bid $400, bid $400, quarter. 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 $400, bid $400, quarter
So $575, that goes to number 40. Number 40 buys $575 price. So stumbling upon this GoBot slot was completely unexpected. I mean, they literally did zero advertising as to the existence of this toad. In their Facebook thing, literally the only thing that caught my eye was that strawberry shortcake lot. So number one, you stumble upon this giant tote of sealed 80s goodness. So you're dealing with that excitement but you're trying to play it cool to not draw too much attention to it. Secondly, you're, you're putting your buyer's hat on and you're trying to do a quick inventory of what exactly is in that case. So you're trying to measure quantity, you're trying to measure quality, condition, and on top of that, you're trying to match it against your finances and trying to come up with a bottom line. And honestly, GoBots are all over the place. In my limited time, I saw multiple instances of sold eBay listings where the price range was just so wide. We're talking close to you know a hundred dollar difference between two items for no real apparent reason. So after ingesting all of that information and struggling internally about what I feel like is a safe spot for me to land in if I were to win this, uh, I came up with my high bid. But also you gotta take into account that you're gonna get hit with a 15% auctioneer's fee plus sales tax. So if you listen carefully, there were some context clues in that live auction footage as to what this all cost. But before I bore you with the financials, let's see exactly what was in that tote. We got a sealed GoBots flytrap, enemy robot garbage truck, garbage truck. Here we have Turbo, friendly robot racer, at Child's World, also Children's Palace for $279. 297. Damn it! We got friendly robot, robot, robot 4x4 truck scratch. You know, it might be useful to have someone on this channel who can actually read, speak. Then we have Gobot Dozer, friendly robot bulldozer. And here we have the leader of the good guys, Leader One. Very creative name. Friendly robot American Jet. This is the gray variant. There is another one, which I believe is in this box. And there's about like 48 of these, so I hope you got time on your hands. Here we have Crasher, enemy robot race car. This one's actually one of the more valuable ones from what I can tell. There is a black variant as well. Fortunately, there's a little curling right there. But I'll tape it, super glue it, do anything to hide it from a potential buyer so I can get the max profit. Enemy Robot Helicopter Copter, Night Ranger, Friendly Robot Motorcycle, P. Diddy, aka Bad Boy for Life, Enemy Robot Bomber. Did the GoBots have like factions like Autobots Decepticons or were they just the friendlies versus the enemies? Friendly Robot Attack Copter, Wrong Way, Enemy Robot Sports Car Stallion, Enemy Robot Sports Car Stinger. And as I mentioned before, here is the blue uh, variant of Leader 1. 319 at Paperama. This right here is probably the creme de la creme when it comes to this lot, from what I can tell. The most valuable piece. And that is a carded Psykill. This is like the Megatron equivalent. The leader of the bad guys. So the last sold listing that I saw was an auction. I uh, don't remember what condition was like, but... It went for 280 something dollars. So this one we're definitely gonna shoot for the moon with. Right here, flip top, friendly robot helicopter. Pumper, friendly robot fire engine. It's funny, I had the same nickname in high school. Although it was self pumper. Cause I didn't have any friendlies interested in me. Except the restaurant. Man, I keep pulling GoBots out of this tote and it's still so full. So I hope you like GoBots, because otherwise this is super boring for you. Got Tank, Enemy Robot Destroyer, Phytor. Look at that, unpunched. Spoons right here is a forklift. An enemy forklift. 
a water walk. He's an enemy robot float plane. Here is Stinger. Uh, I feel something. Yeah, I was going to say he... Oh, actually, didn't we already do Stinger? He looks familiar. So this is a, this is a duplicate right here. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, he is exposed a little bit, so he'll be cheaper. So whoever bought this collection, or whoever owned it, which I'm kind of bummed I never found out the story about it. Um, you know, unfortunately, it usually means, you know, somebody passed away or whatnot. But um, they obviously really liked GoBots and taking care of them. So I'm curious if this is from their childhood or if they got it early before things started booming. A Sparky right here. Spoiler, enemy robot sports car. Crane Brain, enemy robot crane. Then another construction vehicle, Dumper. That's what I used to call my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I didn't have an ex-girlfriend because I didn't have a girlfriend. A Loco, enemy robot train. Blockhead, enemy robot cement mixer. Oh, this one's from Osco. Four seventy nine. I believe I already showed you a bad boy. Yeah, because I made that bad P Diddy joke. Um, and this is probably why, because this one isn't doing so well. You know, they have that same cutout here. Was there? I'll check on the next one. But did they have like robot points? So let me. We'll take a quick look at him. Rescue. Finally, a good guy. Friendly robot ambulance. Kind of looks like Ratchet. Uh, and let's see. No, it was. I mean. It was a proof of purchase, but I'm wondering if you if there was actually a reason to send those in. Zero enemy robot wor enemy robot airplane street heat friendly robot street machine a blaster friendly robot. What are you? Your arms blocking it. Rocket launcher? Is it really? Smallfoot, a friendly robot 4x4 truck. Again, I feel something behind my finger here, which means his UPC is gone. This is like the sign of a serial killer, right? This is like his calling card. Scooter. This is actually a pretty valuable one. I know that I've sold it loose for upwards of 30 bucks. Here's Screwhead. So they made a figure of you, you dum-dums. Jeeper Creeper cleverly turns into a Jeep, even though they spelled it with a G. Keeper Creeper enemy robot off word vehicle. Cut this out again. It really needs to cut it out. Cut it out. Hands cuff here, friendly robot police car. Vanguard friendly robot minivan. Take you and all your friends to the mall. Buggy Man, enemy robot car. And then we got a bunch of the power suit pieces, which are pretty much the limbs of the combiner. Those, these black ones all combine along with the main body, which is not included this lot, to make Renegade, which you can kind of see the silhouette of there. Those are all the carded figures. So then we'll move on to a few of these Super Gobots, which are like the deluxe size ones. This is enemy robot show car Psycho who does not have a face. So you open him up, he has some styrofoam, a little bit of a backstory. So these are not, let's see what they went for. Asco drug, $8.99, on sale for $6.99, so a little more expensive, but not too, too bad. And I don't believe these were factory sealed. A bug bite, $8.47 at Bradley's. Kinda, it's a beetle right there, so it kinda resembles at least in theory, resembles Bumblebee, obviously on a larger scale. He's an enemy robot roadster. Friendly robot street machine, Zemon. Same kind of concept, really basic robot mode. It's basically a car with arms and legs. And, you know, there was really no ingenuity when it came to its transformation. And look at that, it's, you flip it, and reverse it. And then what's a good 80s toy line without some references to Nazis? We got Air Fiend, enemy sports car. Du hast. It's the only German I know without saying something inappropriate. And his just following orders buddy, Baron von Joy. Although this is friendly about sports car, so you know he picked the winning side of the war. 
I also got a bag of loose GoBots. There's a few in here. I know there's Road Ranger right there. This is somebody, somebody else, another guy. Limited edition Pop Secret car. And then we got some cool Micro Machines McDonald's toys, which I don't remember, but this came out in the 90s, but they combined. I mean, there's like a space shuttle there. And last but not least, a brand new car. I actually don't know what this is. Um, I'm going to look it up. But if you open up the batteries, it actually hasn't been removed. So I'm going to leave that alone for now until I know what it actually is. If it's worthless, then I'll start messing around with it. But, you know, if this thing is fresh, out the box, stop, look and watch, ready yet, get set, all that, then I'll leave it as is. So even though I'm not a seasoned vet when it comes to auctions, I do take a kind of passive approach, similar to how I bid for things on eBay. You know, I never understand why people bid early and often. It just drives the price up. So same approach here. I lay back. I kind of see where they start. I let other people bid. And then when it starts to slow down and it's going to one buyer, then I started raising my hand as you saw in the video. Unfortunately, by that point, there was a little bit of a bidding war. So the price wasn't as low as I would have hoped. It wasn't a complete steal, but it was still within my range. I did not hit my max. So by the end of it, the winning bid was $575. But after fees and tax, I ended up paying a cool $702. Now, I don't know about you, but that's definitely a sizable chunk for me, especially when you're talking about it being a somewhat of a gamble with a product and toy line that I don't know like the back of my hand, and that really is all over the place. So I don't necessarily know if this is gonna be an easy sell locally, because I don't want people to be like, what are you asking for this? You're crazy. And that's totally plausible because of how vast the price differences are on eBay. And I don't want to be known as another eBay guy or you know somebody that just is, is, is just has ridiculous off the wall prices. So I think in a in a local scenario like some of the toy shows we sell at, I'll probably bring some of the more consistent, consistently priced figures, ones where you can really pinpoint the value down, so that way you're you're comfortable and like this is what I'm asking. I know I know it's a good price. Uh, and then everything else, just kind of leave it up to eBay. You know, throw it up on there at a buy it now price because I don't really want to fall victim to some of the auctions because that might be one of the reasons why, you know, some figures sold for 30 and others sold for 90. But I don't want to be a victim of time. So, you know, it could be a long haul, but in the end, in the end, I feel like I could comfortably squeeze out, dare I say, $2,000 from this lot. So doubling our money is definitely within the realm of possibility, which is usually what one hopes for. You know, it's, it's still a borderline miracle that finds like this still exists, given the amount of attention 80s collectibles are getting nowadays and the amount of competition in this area. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, as always. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm really enjoying going to auctions. This is only my second one. The first one was a total home run as far as having a lot of vintage toys and not a lot of people that cared about them other than myself. So I was getting them for dirt cheap. Uh, this one, we'll wait and see. Uh, you know, obviously, if you're a GoBots person, person, if you're a GoBots person, I would love, love your feedback. Let me know how you think I did. You know what the potential is out there i'm feeling pretty positive about it you know in the moment you're nervous because you're just you know throwing money around at something that yeah you, you're not so sure about but i i'm feeling pretty pretty good about this now and uh you know just uh, the excitement of finding these things is, is especially in this condition is just it never gets old whether you hang on to them for yourself or not oh and for those of you that tuned in for strawberry shortcake here's what ended up happening with that any interest out for his lot? I'd like to get three hundred dollars on that lot. How about one fifty where? Any interest? I got hundred. So I'm gonna bid one ten. So one ten. So one twenty. One twenty. One thirty. One thirty. One forty. One forty. One fifty. One fifty. One sixty. One sixty. One seventy. One seventy. One eighty. One eighty. One ninety. Bid two hundred. Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. Two and a half. Two and a half. Two seventy five. Two seventy five. Bid three. Two seventy five. Bid three. Two seventy five. I have bid three. Two seventy five. Bid three hundred. I'm gonna two seventy five. Go once price. So $275 for the number 111. $275? Get the f*** out of here. Bye.